Billy Johnston. I wonder why he's written me. Dear Mr. Weatherman, can't you do something about the weather? Today I was getting ready to go on a picnic with Mother and Dad, but it rained and we couldn't go. So I decided I would write you. I know that the rain comes from the sky, but how does all that water get up there? And what makes it come down? Yours, Billy Johnston. P.S. Please promise me good weather for our next picnic. Hmm, guess I'd better answer Billy's letter right away. Too bad the rain spoiled his picnic. Dear Billy, you know that neither I nor anyone else can make the rain stop or start, but maybe I can tell you where it comes from, where it goes, and how it gets back up in the sky. Do you remember how you looked up and seen the clouds shine off the blue sky? The clouds got bigger and darker as you watched. And soon, it was raining. Rain does a lot of good work, Billy. It fills the streams and brooks and rivers. It gives water to the trees and bushes and flowers so they can grow. Some of it makes puddles on the ground, maybe by the walk in your yard. But when the rain stops and the sun shines again, the water in the puddles gradually disappears. Though you can't see it, some of the water is going right back into the air. When you've watched Mother get your supper, have you ever noticed the tea kettle boiling on the stove? As the water boils, the steam rises from the spout and goes into the air. If the water boiled long enough, it would all turn into steam and go into the air. And that, Billy, is what happens to the water in the puddles. The sun warms the water and turns some of it into water vapor, which goes into the air, but so slowly that you can't see it. This invisible water is called water vapor. And here's another way to answer your question, Billy. You may have helped Mother hang wet clothes out on the line. If water didn't turn into vapor and go into the air, those clothes would never dry, no matter how long they hung. They'd stay wet, full of water. But because water does turn into vapor in the warm air, the clothes will dry as they hang out on the line for a few hours. Whenever water goes back into the air, we say that it evaporates. Evaporates. See the word vapor in there? Evaporates means to turn into vapor. Later, when you came back to take the clothes down, they were nice and dry because all the water in them had evaporated into the air. All the rain that falls sooner or later goes back into the air. That's how the rain gets up in the sky. Water evaporates from the puddles. It also evaporates from the brooks, and the lakes, and the rivers, and from the oceans. Everywhere it is evaporating, turning into water vapor and going back into the air. You've played with a mirror, haven't you? Flashing the sun's reflection on the side of the house. If you blow on the mirror, you'll see that your breath gives off water vapor too. See how it dulls the mirror? You can rub it off. Plants, too, return water to the air. But again, you can't see it because water vapor is invisible. Yes, plants of all kinds give off water vapor. The flowers, the bushes, and the trees. They all use water from the earth and send it back into the air. Some of it goes high in the sky where it gathers into pretty white clouds. But now, Billy, what makes this vapor return to Earth as water? Watch sometime when Mother pours hot water into the sink. When the hot steam touches the cool glass, it forms drops of water which are almost like raindrops. 
See how wet the window gets? Heating water makes it evaporate. Cooling vapor changes it back to water. We say it condenses. Look at the glass next time you drink your milk. Does it seem to sweat? Well, the glass isn't really sweating, of course, but it is wet. It's just the water vapor in the nearby air being condensed or turned back to water by the cool glass. The same thing happens outdoors. Invisible water vapor is turned back to water by the cool air. Some vapor condenses on flowers and bushes where it forms tiny drops of water called dew. Sometimes the cool air condenses the water vapor into a heavy gray mist that looks like steam. This we call fog. But much of the vapor rises into the sky. There it condenses into tiny water droplets which gather into clouds. As more vapor rises and cools, the larger and darker the clouds become. When they are heavy with water, the rain falls. On very cold winter mornings, you may have seen an icy white pattern on the window pane. That's frost, which comes from water vapor in the room and freezes on the cold glass. When water vapor freezes in the sky, it falls to earth as snow. Snow stays on the ground for a while, but slowly melts under the sun's warming rays and goes back into the air as vapor. Just remember, water always evaporates into the air. From the oceans, and rivers, and brooks. It evaporates also from plants. But while water is always evaporating into water vapor from some places on Earth, in other places it is constantly returning as dew, or fog, or frost, or snow, or rain. It's important to understand that the earth and everything on it use the same water over and over again. I know what else I can do. I can send Billy this book to tell us what makes rain. When you open this book, look carefully at the drawings. They show how, when the clouds are heavy with water, the rain comes down, forms puddles, travels on top of or through the ground, to the brooks and rivers, even to the ocean. How some of it goes into the ground to feed the trees and plants. This water evaporates and goes back into the air as water vapor. Some of it rises into the sky where it forms clouds to fall again to the earth to be used over and over again. You see, Billy, water is never lost. It condenses and evaporates into water vapor to condense again. That's the story of rain, where it comes from, where it goes, and how the earth has been using the same water over and over again ever since the world began. P.S. Now you know, too, why I can't promise you good 